Hi, I'm Bob Mosher from Lake Cam, your cable access station. As you may know, Lakeville is considering selling 636 acres to the Mass Department of Conservation and Recreation. We've gathered some people from town and from the state to ask them some questions about the proposed sale. Southeastern Massachusetts is the most rapidly developing part of the state. In the town of Lakeville, in Southeastern Mass, in the southwest corner of the town, is a over 600 acre parcel of land that is undeveloped. This incredible piece of property uh, is a great opportunity for the town of Lakeville to work with the state, with the Department of Conservation and Recreation, on a conservation opportunity. The town of Lakeville owns a piece of land on Howland Road, 636 acres that was voted at town meeting, oh, maybe a little over 10 years ago for purchase. The state and Department of Con Conservation and Recreation is looking to purchase that land from, from the town of Lakeville. We've owned it for all those years. We really haven't done too much with it, so there it sits. It has a very small frontage that is in the wetland, actually. The whole frontage for the huge 600-acre piece of property is wetland, so it's a very hard piece of property to access. In 1999, the town of Lakeville purchased land for the purpose of maintaining that land as open space. The town was approached recently by the Department of Recreation and Conservation for the purpose of purchasing that property. What we have is a great opportunity for the citizens of Lakeville to create something, work with the Department of Conservation and Recreation on creating something that is good for families here in town, is good for the community of Lakeville, is good for the environment, and is good for the finances of the town. The Open Space Committee was really quite excited to hear about the potential purchase by the state of the land. For one thing, when the land was, was purchased quite a number of years ago, it was zoned industrial, which always offers the possibility that some people are going to say, oh, we need more industry and it should be developed for industry. But it's really not that well suited for that. Well, it's suited for open space because it really is a, it's a large parcel. It, is, uh, it provides a lot of connectivity between some of the other large parcels in in Lakeville and in Freetown. And it does have, I believe it actually has several habitats there which are, are of interest. Our plan, the open space plan, has talked a lot about the need for wildlife corridors, for green belts and blue ways, uh, for connectivity from not just in Lakeville, but from one community to another. Uh, there was a plan to have a green belt that runs from the Fall River State Park all the way over to Carver. This is still a dream I think of fisheries and wildlife and why I think this, this property is important to them. The property itself is currently zoned industrial which means that only industry can be developed there. It's undeveloped woods, for lack of a better term, which is also referred to as open space. And this is an opportunity for the town to sell the parcel to the state entity for purposes of preserving it as open space. If the Department of Conservation and Recreation is uh, successful, uh, meaning that uh, the town votes positively to sell this 600 plus acre property at town meeting in June, um, we will have protected over 600 acres again. Uh, here will be an opportunity within the town for families, an, inc an incredibly increased additional amount of uh, outdoor recreational opportunities. This is a, a, a beautiful place uh, where people can hike, where um, people can walk their dogs, uh, where people will be able to go hunting, uh, where people can cross-country ski. 
protecting this land is also great for the community in the sense that it'll help protect the small town and rural character that Lakeville has. You might know that this, upper, this, this land is zoned industrial, and if it is developed, or it could be developed in the future, uh, you could have some kind of major industry out here in a very, what is otherwise a very quiet and sleepy corner of town. In terms of conservation values uh, and being good for the environment, this, this piece of property will be folded into the Freetown Fall River State Forest which is currently over in Freetown and Fall River. <laughs> that is also part of the larger southeastern Massachusetts bioreserve. But uh, it's 14,000 acres of protected land that uh, is cooperatively managed between the Department of Conservation and Recreation, our sister agency, the, the Department of Fish and Game, uh, the city of Fall River, and the environmental nonprofit, the Trustees of Reservations. We work together to determine how best to protect land that is currently unprotected within the bioreserve or immediately around it. This piece of land is immediately to the east. A lot of it is very rocky, so no one has ever shown any interest in purchasing the property, not that it was ever for sale, but now that the Department of Conser Conservation and Recreation would like to purchase it and we could get our money back and it would be protected in perpetuity, which means forever. Um, I feel that that is a wonderful thing. There is a, an, action, uh, uh, an action that we wanted to, to do, which was to, to um, develop trails on Howland Road. And I think uh, the state would probably be amenable to that. They may develop trails themselves, but it's certainly not something you would pursue if you were worried about somebody wanting to develop it industrially. So we were really quite excited that, that this particular branch of the, of the state government was interested in purchasing the land. There are advantages and disadvantages, obviously, to any opportunity. I think the advantages for the town is that it can finally realize the intention of it buying this land in the first place. The land was purchased uh, 14 or 15 years ago with the intention of selling it to the state to maintain it as conservation land. Unfortunately, the resources that were allocated for that were never uh, realized on a state level, so the state couldn't purchase the land. Uh, the opportunity has now presented itself for that vision to be realized for the town. The land was purchased for somewhere around $700,000 back in 1999. The, the purchase price offer is $760,000. There's $150,000 left on the bond. So the town would net roughly $600,000, $610,000 from the transaction. The piece of property has never been an interest to a developer to develop because of the very reason I stated. The 200-foot frontage, which is very small, is all wet. So the paperwork involved in having to do a wetland crossing is quite something. And that's not even saying it would be approved. And it would take a considerable filling of the wetlands to access that 600 acres. And I don't believe anybody's ever wanted to take that on. I don't think there's a downside to this. The upsides uh, are that there it will help preserve community character. It'll add in additional recreational opportunities for the citizens of Lakeville and the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as a whole. Um, it is an incredible opportunity for the environment. It will help us protect air quality, water quality, at this kind of scale, habitat level um, preservation for animals uh, and other species. In addition to being a positive for the town of Lakeville, for families, for the community, for the environment. It is a positive for the financial coffers for the town. Everyone knows that town budgets are strained at the moment all over the state, all over the country. Here's an opportunity where the state is willing to come in and help the town conserve this property by purchasing it, making the town whole. The town bought the property in the year 2000 and through the negotiation process we've cooperatively uh, the, the, the 
the Department of Conservation and Recreation, the town have cooperatively come together on an, on an agreement price uh, that not only makes the town whole on its original purchase price, but actually uh, uh, helps it, it. Actually, it's a little bit more. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to serve on the last master plan committee. Uh, the plan came out in 2005. Uh, the discussion of this property uh, came up quite often uh, with the committee and the industrial zoning. Uh, it was the understanding of myself and, and um, I think most of the members that the um, industrial zoning was put in place to protect the property. Uh, we didn't want more residents. At that point, the town had been just overwhelmed with new development, new residential developments. And this was a way of setting that acreage aside for something other than residential development, always with the understanding that we would we would protect it, we would keep it as open space. The thought was that the state would pay the town to put a conservation restriction on the property. Uh, we, we weren't really thinking about selling it to the state, but selling it to the state is just a wonderful solution because we have the benefit of having the land protected in town without any of the associated cost of protecting that land or the cost that we'd have to deal with if it were developed. If we, we, I mean, there's always an expense to development um, to the town. Another financial benefit is that the town would receive what's called a pilot payment from the state. That's payment in lieu of taxes. The town derives no tax benefit from the parcel because it's town owned. Once the state owns it, it will qualify for a payment in lieu of taxes, which is in essence like a property tax payment that the state makes to the municipality. For example, Lakeville currently has property uh, consisting of five parcels that is valued around $1.1 million and receives about $9,500 as payment in lieu of taxes. So assuming that this property was val valued at what it was paid for, or what they paid us for, um, for it. Assuming that the property is valued at what the purchase price was, one could estimate that this, this pilot payment may be somewhere around $7,000. Um, so that's an additional $7,000 a year that we would receive from the state for, for the parcel. If you think about how much money the town would have to invest to receive $7,000 a year, that's, that's certainly an upside in, in terms of um, uh, the, the cash potential for, for the property. Some of the downsides to selling were not issues that I've personally raised, but I think that they're issues that I've heard folks talk about in town, and I think they're, that some of them are, are, have merit. One criticism of the sale is that we're not receiving enough money. One of the problems with this offer is that this, these are the only folks willing to buy the property. And as you know, or you may not know, anything, including real estate, is only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. The state determined its value based on an assessment of the property and an appraisal of the property. And we checked that information within our own tax assessor's office. So we're comfortable with the value assessment and we're comfortable with the amount knowing that there are no other offers. Part of this process required that the town put out an RFP for the sale of the property. So within that process, anybody had an opportunity to, to bid on that land. If you look at the parcel itself, there are several problems with it that would support the valuation. There's a tiny amount of frontage to gain access. So what that means is that someone would have trouble getting, even getting to the back land of, of the parcel, which is where the predominant amount of, of spaces. There's also a huge wetlands crossing that would have to take place that would further um, confuse or, or 
derail any, any efforts of, of development. Another aspect that deters development is the fact that most or a good portion of that land is ledge. As part of the transaction when the town bought it, an entity was given the right to try to extract as much aggregate as they could from the parcel. They dug a series of, of test bores to determine what was in that parcel and they never did any excavation whatsoever because of the lack of quality of the terrain and the, the aggregate itself. So those are some of the factors that help determine the value, which again, you could make the argument that it's worth more, but it's certainly not Betty's neck in terms of the beauty and all of that. And also a lot of those opportunities don't exist anymore in terms of finding grants and and, and getting outside funding to help supplement open space. I mean, we're just now coming out of the recession. And with that, this may be our best opportunity to realize any, any money from, from the parcel. I think a wonderful thing about the piece of land on Howland Road, should it be acquired by DCR and should it pass a vote at town meeting, which I certainly hope it does, is that my experience with the Department of Conservation and Recreation is that they do a wonderful job on protecting their parcels that have conservation restrictions on them. Um, much better than we can do as the town of Lakeville. The properties that we already have in open space, we have a hard enough time with uh, budget restrictions. We have a hard enough time taking care of the land that we already own. That's a 600 piece, acre piece of property and the stewardship of land, as I can tell you, because we've had Betty's Neck now, which is only 350 acres for quite a while. And stewardship of land, once you acquire it, is huge. And we need help. And I think DCR would be a wonderful steward of that piece of land in Lakeville. For the town of Lakeville, there will be no restrictions. Uh, this, this property will be entirely managed by the Department of Conservation and Recreation, and it will be permanently protected under the Article 97 of the amendments to the Constitution of Massachusetts. Any land that the, state, that the Department of Conservation and Recreation spends capital dollars on is permanently protected. It's my understanding that the parcel will be used for conservation and recreation as its sole exclusive use. It will fall under the state's uh, Article 97 park designation, which doesn't allow development on the, the parcel uh, in perpetuity. The state could go in for the sake of um, maintaining or creating maybe a hiking trail or something like that. But again, based on the nature of the parcel, I don't know as if they would necessarily do that. I think that the, the intent is or to be part of the biosphere belt, which in essence starts further west and heads east. And they want to connect um, existing parcels of open space for the sake of creating this biosphere. I would say that it fits in very much with what we, uh, with what we generally support and, and promote, which is, uh, uh, is open space. I mean, Conservation Commission is a, is a great supporter of open space. The original conservation commissions existed for that, to conserve uh, valuable open space areas. Once we sell, and if we sell, our piece of land on Howland Road to the Department of Conservation and Recreation, it will automatically become Chapter 97 land. So in perpetuity, that means forever, there will never be able to be any kind of a development I have a very similar, or we have, I say I sometime, but we have a very similar agreement with Betty's Neck. And it is ironclad that nothing else can go there but what's there. Uh, the Peach Barn Visitor Center is there, but we even had to write into the agreement that we could put restrooms in in the future. So once the deal is struck, it will be almost an ironclad deal. Nothing could change there without an act of the legislature. The land will be managed through the Department of Conservation and Recreation through its Freetown Fall River State Forest, uh, which is just over, just over the town line. 
uh, it will be publicly accessible to all citizens of Lakeville and the rest of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The town would be foolish not to accept the offer of the state. I don't think we will ever get anything um, that would benefit us as much as, as having this public land. This would be land that we can use. We can, it's large enough that hunting would not be an issue. Uh, we have a park very close, close to the library that we've, we've withdrawn the, the hunting rights just because of the development that's gone on around the area. It's just not safe. Here's another 600 acres that could be open to hunting in town. Hiking, just a place to go when you don't necessarily want to hear highway noise. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's very few places in town that you can, you can actually get to these days where it's quiet. Some might say that the land is actually worth a lot more than what the offer is. And I think if you look at some of the reasons why it's undeveloped, that speaks to the value. Uh, it's unde undeveloped because there's very little access to the parcel, there's very little frontage, and there's a huge wetlands barrier to getting to the main piece of the parcel, which is really the only part that could be developed. Once you get back there, there's a, a large portion that is more or less ledge that would require a lot of excavation and because of all of these factors, it's really cost prohibitive for a developer, in my opinion, to purchase the property and get in there and do anything with it. There's some folks that, that even have, in my opinion, a little bit more ext extreme of a view where the, the idea is, well, why don't we change the zoning to residential for purposes of increasing the property value value to a developer and increasing the value for the purposes of the property being developed. But that flies in, in the face of the reason why it was purchased in the first place, which was for open space preservation. If you put 200 houses in there, you might as well build a school right in the middle of it. And that's certainly something that I think has to be taken into account if you're gonna talk that way as, as a viable option to selling the land is changing the zoning to increase the value for the sake of houses, it really would have a negative impact, whereas preserving open space would maintain the positive impact. The bottom line is I really hope that the people of Lakeville will vote to sell this piece of land on Holland Road to the Department of Conservation and Recreation. It's going to be open to the people of Lakeville, just like it is now, although not used. The trails might be improved. The property will be under their guidance, so hopefully some of the illegal activities that have been going on there will cease. So it's really a win-win situation. We still can use the land. It will be protected and not at the cost of the people of Lakeville. And it will remain open space in perpetuity, which means forever. When the vote comes up uh, at town meeting to decide whether or not we want the, um, the state to purchase this property, I am certainly going to vote in favor of that. Uh, years ago, when the town the town voted to buy the land in the first place. It was also decided at that time to, to zone it industrial. And I was very disappointed by that part of it. I was very much in favor of the town buying the land, but not the industrial zoning. So this move to have the state take it for conservation purposes or the state buy it, which is even better, um, is something I'm very much in favor of. I think this is a no-brainer issue. I think it's a positive for the state positive for the town of Lakeville government and I think it's a positive for the citizens of Lakeville. The win-win situation for Lakeville also includes money. We bought this piece of property for X amount of dollars back in eh, the 90s and we will get our money returned to us which is always helpful. So we get our money back, we get someone else to watch the property and we can continue to use it. 
that is a win-win situation. It's a wonderful thing for Lakeville. At town meeting vote in June, the, the citizens of Lakeville have an incredible opportunity, a rare opportunity to protect a very, very large piece of land in southeastern Mass, the fastest growing part of the state. By voting to sell this land to the State Department of Conservation and Recreation, the town will be creating a fantastic outdoor amenity for its citizens, and it also will be bringing money into the town coffers that uh, will be put to good use for the citizens of Lakeville. If we do nothing, it stays the way it is and it's preserved. If we sell it, it stays the way it is and it's preserved and we get $760,000 and the potential for $7,000 of a payment in lieu of taxes from the state forever. Lake Cam takes no position on this issue. We tried to find people who could give some alternate perspectives, but that was a challenge. If you'd like to offer your viewpoint, we welcome you to come forward and appear on our Lake Cam public access channel. <laughs>